the working model of memory. So the specification requires you to understand and evaluate the working model of memory. And you need to be aware of the different um, features, components of the model. So the central executive, the phonological loop, uh, the visuospatial sketchpad and the episodic buffer, as well as the coding and capacity of each of those different features. So the working model of memory is just a model of short term memory. So unlike the Montessori model that offered a description of sensory memory, short term memory and long term memory, this is just a model of the short term memory. It sees long term memory as more passive. Um, and it also describes the structure and function of the different components within short term memory. So Badley and Hitch believes that short term memory is made up of the central executive, the phonological loop, the visuospatial sketchpad and the episodic buffer. So if we look at the diagram of the model, you can see how the four components are related to one another and how they link to long term memory. So the central executive is the most important component of the model. I've put the word boss above it because it is like a central executive of a company It is the one that is in charge. So it is responsible for allocating the information to the different subsystems or slave systems. So to the phonological loop, episodic buffer and the visual spatial sketchpad. However, not much is really known about how it functions and it is relatively limited in its own capacity. If we move on to the phonological loop, this deals with spoken and written material, hence why I've put an ear next to it. And it is made up of two systems, two subparts within itself. So the phonological store, which holds words that have been heard, so it's like the inner ear holds information in a speech based form. We also have the articular articulatory um, control process, which acts like an inner voice. So it rehearses the information. It allows us to rehearse um, um, information that we have heard. In itself, capacity is about two seconds of what you can say. So it's very limited in its capacity. The visual spatial sketchpad deals with visual and spatial information. Again, it is made up of different components. So we have the visual cache, which stores visual data and information and the inner scribe that allows us to recall and record information in vision. Um, again, capacity is limited. It's about three or four objects that we can hold in there. The episodic buffer integrates information from the other stores and links to long term memory. Now it's like a backup store which communicate, communi communicates with the long term memory and the other components. So if we look at some questions that you might get in the exam, now you might get a diagram to fill in. Now the top circle oval needs to have central executive written there. Now the other three, it doesn't matter what order you put, episodic buffer, visuospatial sketchpad or phonological loop. As long as central executive is at the top, you can have the other three components in any order along the bottom. You might also get a full marker that's briefly described the working memory model. So that's just a description, say that it's of short term memory, believes that short term memory is made up of different parts, made up of phonological loop, which is to do with verbal information. It's made up of a visual spatial sketch pad, which deals with visual and spatial information. And then it's made up of the episodic buffer, which deals with um, information from long term memory and the slave systems. And then finally, the central executive, which is the most important part, allocates information to the different slave systems. You might get a question that asks you to outline 
certain features of the model. So, for example, three components of the working memory model are the central executive, phonological loop and the visuospatial sketchpad. Briefly outline each of these components, six marks. So each component that you're going to describe is going to be worth two marks. So you're going to describe each for two marks. So I'd include two points about them. An experiment was carried out to investigate the working memory model. So this is an application question. One group of participants was asked to carry out two visual tasks at the same time. A different group of participants were asked to carry out a visual task and a verbal task at the same time. The results showed that the participants who carried out two visual tasks at the same time performed less well on tasks than participants who carried out visual task and a verbal task at the same time. Use your knowledge of the working memory model to explain this finding. So here you're going to talk about the limited capacity of um, both the phonological loop and the visuospatial sketchpad. So you'd say that they'd find it hard to do two verbal tasks because, sorry, two visual tasks because they are competing for the same limited capacity within the visuospatial sketchpad. So they're both fighting for that limited capacity. However, they could do a visual task and a verbal task because they are using two different components. So one, the vi visual task is using the visuospatial sketchpad, but the verbal task is using the phonological loop. So they're not competing for that limited capacity of both those stores. So if we move on to evaluation then, we've got supporting evidence from the case study of KF. So KF had a motorcycle accident and his verbal short term memory was impaired, but his visual short term memory was still intact. So suggesting that short term memory is made up of different stores, so made up of a verbal element and a visual element. Dual task studies by Badley and Hitch have found that participants do perform worse on two visual tasks rather than a visual and a verbal task, which suggests that there are separate stores of information, that each store has a limited capacity. We have contradictory evidence by Lieberman. So he's criticised the working memory model by saying that the visuospatial sketchpad implies that all spatial information was first visual and the visual and spatial information are linked together. However, he has stated that blind people also have excellent spatial awareness. So even though they've never had that visual element, they still are able to have excellent spatial ability. So he's suggesting that visual and spatial aren't linked together. Also, you've learned about the Montessori model of memory, so you might as well use that as an evaluation point to compare it to. So the working memory model has been criticised for being too simplistic and vague. So it's unclear what the central executive actually does and how it works. Also, this is just a model of short term memory. So it's not a comprehensive model, unlike um, Multistore that looks at sensory memory and long term memory. For usefulness, we haven't really got any information or evaluation points we could use there. We can look at the testability of the information and the model. So the model was developed and based on evidence from lab experiments. So they are very highly controlled settings. Confounding variables and extraneous variables are controlled. Therefore, it is likely that the results have high internal validity. What we are measuring is what we have intended to measure. And it is likely that we have high reliability due to standardised procedures. Therefore, we should be able to establish cause and effect. However, if we wanted to extend that evaluation point further, we could discuss the problems with lab experiments. So the fact that a lot of these are artificial tasks and the strict control of the environment means there is a lack of mundane realism. It may lack external and ecological validity due to how highly controlled the environment is. So it might not actually explain memory in everyday life. So yes, the model might explain memory based in lab based settings, but will it actually apply to memory in the real world, can we generalise it to outside of the research setting? Maybe not. 
So essay questions, it's likely you'll have a question written along these lines. So outline and evaluate the working memory model, discuss the working memory model for 16 marks. Now it's important to remember that during the first um, AS exam, it was written as outline and evaluate working memory. The word model was missed out, which confused some students. So you may get a question that says outline and evaluate the working memory. That means the working memory model. So here I would do my two A01 paragraphs um, on the different features of the model. So I talk about it being just of short term memory, that it was made up of different components, what those different components are. So I describe the central executive and its role within the working memory model. I then describe the three slave systems and how they work together, the limited capacity, the fact that you can't do two tasks that require the same slave system due to the limited capacity of each of those. I then move on to three to four evaluation points for the model.